Kim. Moving on, contestant number 11, Ching Biak Moi. Hello. Okay. We all know the name of a beautiful host, Miss Nyang Hai Sang. But Miss, what if I tell you, you do not look Nyang Hai Sang enough just by your physical appearance. How would you feel? Yes, that mixed feeling of embarrassment, anger, humiliation, and I should say it, alienation, or whatever you may call it, is what, 19, is what one, one third of the 19.3% of minorities in India are facing right now. According to sociologist Louis Wirth, the first president of ISA, he defines minorities as a group of people who are singled out in the society um, just because of their physical and cultural characteristics. In India, well, India, one of the globe's most diverse countries, has various sets of minorities, namely um, racial minorities, uh, religious minorities, gender minorities, and even linguistic minorities. And this group of minorities have been facing intolerance due to the nonsensical attitudes of the majorities, like one, religious fanaticism, two, ethnicity, three, Hindutva ideology, fourth, the spirit of conservatism, and fifth, even the feeling of separatism. You know, such attitudes, I would like to call it as very barbaric in nature and at the same time inhuman and brutal as it kills people physically and mentally. October 26, 20, in the town of Anan in Gujarat, the Hindus protested the setting up of a Muslim hotel. You know why? It is just because the hotel was owned by a Muslim and they were forced to recite the slogan, Zay Shri Ram if they want to continue their business. Another instance, in the town of Raipur, uh, Pastor Firoz was attacked while he was preaching. Such religious intolerance just proved the veracity of Thomas Metcalf's observation. About. He defines India, you know, just a timeless land of tradition-bound people for whom religion alone had meaning. Another instance, on October 18, 2021, recently, um, one of the famous clothing brands in India, Fab India, they received a very serious setback. You know why? Just because they use a few words of Urdu, the Shan E Rivas, in their clothing advertisement. You know, such cultural intolerance is the evidence that the level of intolerance in India has reached the apex level. In the context of Northeast, the greatest intolerance could be seen in what is called ethnic racism. How could one forget Nido Tania, who was beaten to death on January 29, 2014, just because he did not look Indian enough in appearance? Another instance, one student from Delhi University was abruptly called Corona in the streets and was even spat on with a battle nut. You know, for, Eastern, for Northeasterners, it is not only a fight against the presumption of a non-Indian or unwanted Indian, but rather a fight for equal, but a fight for due respect, due recognition, and due acceptance as equal citizens, despite the equal provisions of uh, the Article 15, 16, 19, and 29 of the India's Constitution. With response, um, Minorities have been speaking out, expressing their solidarity uh, through every platform available, for instance, media, researches, and even through organizations. Yes. And this hegemonic boom of Hindutva policy greatly shattered Jawaharlal Nehru's dream of unity in diversity. I would like to end my speech with Dr. Tongkolal Haukip's word, he's a professor in JNU. He says, the scars of such injustice, intolerance, and bigotry will forever linger in our memories. That's all from me for the intolerant India, the case of minorities. Thank you. Thank you, Ching Moi.